Welcome back to Banner Saga 3. The end. Rush Bolvrick, attacking while he's off guard. You lunge your weapon, arcing towards Bolvrick with the momentum. The fight is on. There is no happy ending to any of this, I'm afraid. We fight and we die. It doesn't actually matter. I believe that I have won the game, apparently. <laughs> I don't need to win this battle. This is just to determine if people survive this. I've heard enough. Stay out of my way, Ivor. Now, you know what? I don't think so. I really don't think so.
And it's done. The mighty Bulverick has fallen. Well, that was the game, I suppose. Victory. At long last. Yeah, the reduced chance said, but it doesn't matter. It's over. It's finally over. You glance up, the White Tower is much taller than you imagined. Tall enough to reach the sun, you wonder. A trick pr perspective? No, there really are that many stairs. Bulwark doesn't look right. Still as he is, but he doesn't rise again. Raven stare, wearing a wide range of emotions on their faces. You don't have no time to gape yourself. You drag Ivan towards the tower where stairs spiral to upward beyond sight, and you take the first of many, many steps. We've reached the end. The sun. Quickly, the top of the tower is just up those stairs. This is crazy, I still can't believe that's an actual sun. Are we really going to put it back in the sky somehow? Ivan, well, Juno, there has to be some other way, I can't. You can, we've come this far. Wait, Juno, wait. If this is really happy, happening now, give me a moment. Juno and Ivan embrace one final time. Ivan whispers something meant only for her. And then you are forced to move on. To save the world. 
And that's what I find annoying about Banner Saga. The final battle was fucking pathetic. I'm not even kidding. It was really legitimately the world lives or dies here. This is it. At the center of the tower, Juno sits upon the pedestal, and Ivan reluctantly begins his task. Juno hovers in the area immobilized. She looks peaceful as he finally lets go of the burden she had carried this far when he hears from her rumbling. What? Ah, the serpent. It doesn't look good. <laughs> Certainly has suffered a great deal. The serpent raises its tattered head to, to the tower top. It speaks in ancient tongue as before. Be gone, creature. You don't even have the strength to crush this tower anymore. The serpent continues to slow, undulating speech. It's like rolling over seawater. Ivan stops. He's listening. What does it want? It's giving up. It wants to make a deal. Half a prophecy of extinction says the darkness will lift and it will spare our burn. Consumes only half the world. Half a world in exchange for what? Juno's energy. If I release it to the serpent, Juno will be gone, but you won't suffer. Ivan, this isn't what we came to do. Things change, Ivor. This is out of your hands now. Tell me why. Have I not earned that, at least? Ivan turns his attention to it for station, but it's behind him, the serpent battles and resentment of moving north. Why? Because Juno doesn't deserve it. Doesn't he understand what's happening here? How could I? It's been nothing but lies and secrets since we first met. What chances did we have? Try to imagine if I told you the truth when we met. It was hard enough convincing anyone to listen in the first place. Back in the singer hall when I begged you to wait for Juno, how long did you wait? Would you have been so quick to abandon Rook or Let? After all I did, I uh, tried to save the Varl from extinction. If you knew the truth, you'd have drowned me in that lake yourself. I couldn't even trust you to save yourself. We waited because we trusted you. True enough, but only until you had to consider your own discovery. What's the point of this either? So brothers and clansmen can keep killing each other over petty disputes. So far, old and Dredge can go destroying each other over ancient history. I, even after we realized the Dredge were only fleeing the Dark Darks can see him as a restaurant. Even after discovering a Dredge child like Dinosaur and an infant, everyone is ready to slide like a pit. And yet, the Dredge child lives on, even now. So maybe one of us is spared. Is this really what you want to argue right now? Look, you've made good points, but try to put yourself in my position. Ask the fate, wait the fate of the world against their loved ones. Would you choose it? the world? The serpent slithers up anxiously. It's not accustomed to being ignored, but Ivan seems determined to get this off his chest. We know no, how this world real is. Remember Dangler's Godstone. The old woman lies to our faces about who attacked her, then she mocks us for not butchering the stone hurl in sight. And even with that truth laid bare to us, there was a debate. How can we hope to overcome that kind of spite and universe, that hatred? What are we fighting so hard to preserve exactly? I will continue to hope until the day there's nothing to hope for. I know you believe that, but we don't know the depths of what. There was a woman near Orsma River after we somehow survived the crossing the chasm. Some of her own classmen had tied her to a stake which they screamed. She was meant to starve to death. I can still see her face, torture and pain. Do you remember how many days she had hung there, starving, before we arrived? Three days. I only remember that she was not left to there to die thanks to us. Three days, they said. Many, maybe those men lied, or maybe with the sunset, maybe they miscounted. She had been there at least seven days already, and can feel her anger in the tapestry. According to their own absurd rules, it proves she wasn't what she w should have been freed. Can't imagine suffering like that for a world that doesn't even remember. That's what it's about, isn't it? This is about Juno. I'm not trying to make everything about Juno. I just need to believe in what I'm supposed to do. Ivan seems to be swayed by her arguments. The coal of the serpents are wrapping tight to her own tarn. You can feel its patient growing thin. When we found Juno's body smashed and broken in the frozen sea, I saw the same fate for her as that poor woman starving to suffering, alone, forgotten. Everyone else was so quick to give her up upon her. I'm grateful that you did not, but for that's what you're asking me to do now. I must sound pathetic. I realize this is has to be hard to simplify. May maybe all of people you can, Ivor. When you stood against Bellower on the bridge and on her tough, I finally recognized you, and I knew 
what he had done to Reyes and his child. He followed us bo to Bozgard to finish job. What would you give to have a let back? Don't make Sufer, uh, Juno suffer an even worse fate. Please, Ivor. Trust me to find a solution. Ivan turns back to Serpent and his body rating. If you're going to do something... Ivan. This isn't what Juno wanted. Ivan again stops speaking to Serpent. This time turns to you with sorrow instead of anger. Juno is everything the world deserves. Instead you got... I mean, I'm so tired, Dark. Ivor. Courage, this was the hard part. Forgive me, Juno. I'll love you always. I've never seen anything like the sun come to life. I hope I never will again. Stuck with him, just a speck so far above our heads was Juno, who turned the darkness into light. Ivan did not want to leave the sun behind as we departed the inner earth. I expect he will return there often. No warp crossed our path the long trek home. They've all turned to ash. And now, we are coming to this journey's long end. The same thought rattling around my head the whole way. Do I dare to hope? Alright, the journey is over. It's almost hard to believe, believe they really did it, whatever it is, but the sun's actually moving again. For a long time things were looking pretty hopeless. The gods are dead, the world turned to us, and we still survive. Are we all that's left? I don't think so. Life will return. Grass and green will sprout from dust. I believe there are other survivals. Varl and Dernarf. Perhaps all around godstones. Of the darkness there may still be horseborn fleeing across the fields, or ship of men. Or dredge without thunder, so we rebuilt. I just wish that Alette could be here to see this. I have a feeling that she did see it somehow. For a long time now, I've been thinking of an epic poem. You'll never guess the inspiration. Would you care to hear what I've got? This sounds like an ideal moment. Alaga smiles and draws his lute from around his back. He sings with the brightness in his voice. Only the sun has stopped, cut with keen edged sword. A little do they sleep, lest they not come home. Weary the weight of the sun. Of our bones, the hills, the slayer and the slain, from their homes must all flee and cast their ho hone in there, to speak in all tongues where a foe may lurk. The destined day shall come, the fetters will burst, brothers fight and kingship stain, and fear quake all. The true hero comes reluctantly, raising high their shining light. Alas, the sea is still dead and wide. The hounds are hungered. We live as we still live, with a mighty grief that. Uh, was ours and theirs. Only we for you remember it now. Alu gives a little cuff to indicate he's done. It's not bad, a little bleak maybe. It could use a couple more verses at the end there. Ah, you're right, it certainly could. Wait, what's that? Do you see it? You squinted to the ashes of the twisted land spread across the horizon. Ah, leaps right, something there is moving. It looks like a line of people at the front. Is that Ivor?
Well, that's it. Costine signing.